first of all, uh, congratulations to Exchange for Media for ninth year of a very successful event where I have come earlier also a number of times and had a very good uh, feedback from people and Anurag uh, Batra for keeping the flag held high through hail, storm and high water, I must say. Well done. I was in Doha this week and there was an international conference about 45 countries, 300 delegates on social media and uh, challenges. And I was very shocked that there were only two people from India. Besides me, there was a person from International Federation of Journalism. And uh, I asked them that what happened and they said no one came from India. So what's happening in India is, especially in social media sector, that we are becoming very opaque. And uh, there's not much transparency. Social media and digital platforms are accused of being very trivial, entertainment oriented. So just to bust that myth, I have some uh, slides which we'll show and then uh, I'll speak very little. I'll be very happy to take questions because my job earlier as an anchor was to ask questions and now I really want to engage with people and uh, uh, discuss with them because you get to learn more when people are asking questions than sitting in a studio and telling them what's going on. So let's quickly begin with this uh, presentation. Can we have that please? Sorry. Yeah, I work for uh, Go News India, which uh, we started three years ago, and uh, it's a digital platform for news, and uh, it's uh, what we thought was the first television on your mobile set, because people were moving very frantically from television to mobile, and uh, so far it has been very successful. We are very happy with its progress and uh, with friends like Anurag who helped us a lot in this endeavor and it's a new vision which we thought we'll put together. So this is the situation uh, right now and that's why we went on handheld that in India despite such a huge penetration of mobile we are still lagging a bit because in terms of mobile phone but not smartphone, we are still 40 percent and 35 percent are people with the smartphones which uh, works out to nearly 350 or 400 million people which is a huge number when you are um, talking in terms of uh, Europe and other smaller countries. And this is what uh, Navika is not here, I just wanted to tell her this is what's been happening to the news channels television channels, 400 of them in India, that between 15 to 18, the growth was about 18 percent. And all of a sudden, in 2018, the growth dipped to just 1 percent. So this is the number of people watching TV, news on TV is going down. When I was in uh, television, the total percentage of people watching news on television was 11 percent. Today it's come down to only 7. Only 7 percent of the total television genre is news and out of which now lately we are seeing that the English bit of the news has gone down even then less than 1 percent. So Hindi has become bigger and very importantly for a country like India the languages have become stronger when it comes to news uh, on television. Ad industry, if you look at this, we are doing very well as a country. As our FMCG industry, whole sector, consumption goes up, ads are increasing. And this is really uh, bread and butter for all of us in uh, uh, television or digital genre. So from 68,000 crore, it has got about, uh, the projection is that we'll be more than 
nearly doubling it in next uh, five years. So that's a very good growth, which is more than 12 percent in terms of uh, market. Now, where is this coming from? This is very important. This is basically coming from television largely, 39 percent, print 29 percent, and now digital media is really catching up. It was 20 percent in uh, 2018, and people tell me 2019, the numbers are not in yet, that the digital media share in the entire ad pie has actually crossed print media. So we are seeing the same trends as we saw in Europe and in Western countries, in America. So this is how the ad spends are going. We do a lot of stories on media because as a digital platform, we have no competition in terms of that he said, she said, so we just uh, do a lot of stories on this thing. And one of our mottos is to report a lot on connectivity besides health, education, agriculture, and the subjects people forget these days. Now, how this social media ad spend is uh, laid out? The largest is on social media, which are uh, there for everyone to see. I was shocked to hear that the number of WhatsApp users have gone ahead of 400 million in India, which is absolutely huge. It's almost everyone who's got a smartphone in India has a WhatsApp. And that's uh, how uh, the telecom uh, majors have to deal with in the coming years because you, you are dealing with WhatsApp now, which is owned by uh, Facebook, and I still consider it as a uh, social media platform like Instagram, which is also uh, owned by Facebook. So WhatsApp has become not only a big mover, in terms of information, it has also become uh, the largest source of information for people. I'm not talking about news, I'm just talking about information. Indian political parties, uh, they are now organized on WhatsApp. Uh, Bharati Janta Party has the largest WhatsApp, uh, for the lack of any word, group. And uh, they can reach out to millions of people if they want to put out any information. And that's why it's becoming uh, a major mover of information. The second uh, category is paid search, which goes all to Google, because that's the only, I think, 95% Indians use Google or Chrome. So that's paid search, which goes there. Video online is becoming very big now. And that was the idea of uh, launching Go News because short videos, local language was the prime mover in terms of uh, uh, discovery of news. So video, online video is becoming very big. Navika was talking about her videos going um, 130,000, 150,000. Some of our videos, they just cross a million within hours. And so that's the strength of uh, uh, social media platforms and uh, news on social media. Display ads, we all know that, is very expensive. But that again, display ads mostly are going to either Safari and in India to Chrome. And that's again Google. So 85% of the money, when we are talking about social media and we are talking about online, goes only to two companies. And that's Amazon and Google. And that's... Uh, what one has to keep in mind, that where people are, are spending. Amazon. Facebook, sorry. Facebook and uh, Google, not Amazon. Amazon is a uh, different site. <clears throat> now, India has one billion downloads of apps. And this uh, is staggering, a staggering number. One billion downloads of app. Uh, but it was the largest non-organic market. Uh, App Flyers tells us uh, the Google, was, uh, Google Play has not released the numbers, but now there are players in the area which tell us what's going on in this sphere. And there, if you look at uh, the numbers, the organic app downloads are going down, 9%, minus 9 in one year. While the paid uploads, which you must be getting for your Paytm, for your Zomatos, for your all kind of other Amazon, Flipkart, they are going up 
very high. And, and there's a cost involved in that of getting people to download your apps. And one billion is a huge number when it comes to uh, app downloads. But, and there's a big but here, India is still a very poor social media economy. And this is the reason why it's so poor. Because our revenue per user is very low. And these are annual figures. You can imagine that on entertainment, it's 111 rupees. So when we are talking about people going on Netflix and uh, uh, Amex players and movies and all that, it's, it's, it's nothing. When you, it comes to shopping, even there, the numbers are going down. It was 338 rupees in 2017 and now in 2018 it was 172. The numbers of 19 are still coming in. Same with travel where now the ICRTC, which is the railways, the monopoly in India, and all your spice jets and travelmonkey.coms and all that, I mean, this is, uh, this is the figure for you, 270 rupees a year per user of app. So that's, that's where the problem is. Indians don't have money. Or they are not spending that much money online because they are still uh, doubtful and hesitant in going online and spending money. And that figure is uh, certified by cash in circulation in India. And by the way, now there is more cash in circulation in India than it was before uh, 2016 when the government wanted the country uh, denotified uh, 1000 rupee and 500 rupee notes and wanted to become online uh, uh, payments. And this in, uh, includes all your PTMs, your Beam app and your UPI and everything. So India is still a cash economy and that's why the money is not there in online and social media that much that it should be going by the economy we have, which is now the sixth largest economy in the world. Here is the rub now. If you look at the change of percentage in digital ad spending, it spiked and now it's going down. It spiked in 2016 at 110% and now it's down to 20%. It will be 20% next year, that's 2021. And uh, digital ad spending is increasing, but it's not flying as high as it was initially after 2016. <clears throat> so thank you. So that's, uh, that's all I have. But now I'll just uh, ask you some, uh, uh, something more I'd like to say here about uh, social media and where the problem is. The problem, as I just told you, about uh, downloading app and non-organic. In the digital space, people are still unable to monetize huge numbers of views. Now, if you are on WhatsApp and your uh, uh, video goes viral on WhatsApp, there's no way that you can uh, monetize that. On Facebook, if you look at the numbers now, Facebook is making less than 1% of its entire global revenue from India. So now Facebook, India's, the subscription base of Facebook in India is the largest, but its revenue doesn't come from India. So that's, that's one big thing. If you look at other uh, social media platforms like Twitter and all, their revenue from India on a huge consumer base is even less than 1% globally. So it's very clear that Indians do not want to pay for information. They want everything free. And that is what uh, Navika was also talking about, that we have this culture where your information comes from your chai ka dhaba, from the office gossip, and uh, earlier it used to come from nice and people who will travel house to house. So we as a country do not want to pay for news. The largest circulating uh, newspaper in India costs more than 20 rupees 
but we pay only two and a half rupees for that because people don't want don't want to pay for news and on digital they won't subscribe to the newspaper as they do uh, in Europe and in America and other developed uh, economies and on online especially on social media and digital platforms the only way you can successfully monetize is by subscription and even in the west because of social media because news is available so freely everywhere that uh, now i was uh, i was hearing that in, uh, amazon is get, getting into news i mean all kind of platforms who have a large base wants to give you the news and it's all free google news is the largest news player and until very recently they didn't hire any journalists but everything is um, uh, algorithm based they just pick up stuff which is going on there and keep pushing it and it's become a huge uh, problem in the west uh, mr trump is uh, president trump is going to come here and uh, they are already started another inquiry whether in this 2020 election russia is going to play a role because the news online can be pushed by anywhere who's paying money to someone somewhere and that is the transparency i talk about and that's the opaqueness of the system that we talk about and that has to be dealt with and that's very important if the future of digital media in news has to be secured that we need to know that how many people have actually uninstalled their twitter app how many people are actually using facebook for entertainment or for news we have no data all these big companies that come out don't come out with such data which is specific even to their largest subscription base which is india i've gone through uh, annual report on annual report of twitters of facebooks and everyone and even google i don't get that information because uh, it's not there because first they want to increase their database and then they want to convert the whole thing into a commercial proposition so these people are not in the business of news for news they are in the business of news for business and that's why the next big thing which is going to shake up india is whatsapp pay Amazon has always started its pay. If WhatsApp starts <coughs> a bank, it would be the largest bank in the world, and that's what they are waiting for. That once they get government reg regulatory uh, clearances, they are going to turn into a bank. So you can actually send money on WhatsApp and receive money on WhatsApp, and you can imagine that 400 million base, the kind of operation that would be, and that's got nothing to do with news. so the big players online are there for business and the small players online who are there for news are unable to monetize and that's the biggest challenge india is facing right now in terms of news and online and social media i've just come back to doha i just come back to that whole uh, situation there were serious concerns shown by organizations like uh, international human rights commission amnesty etc that how news is being pushed by third parties in different countries in the world and that's one big thing which i want to just underline here and how only transparency by the big tech platforms can help us decode that and uh, put it in perspective then how that uh, will save democracies this is a serious i'm just reading this book that how social media is changing democracies uh, across the world and if in democracies the role of media is very important as we all know to inform people to inform people so they can make right choices and that is under threat because the people who have the backbone and platforms are not interested in democracies or in news 
they are interested in their business and they are pushing it forward. So that's how things come to this thing. I've been in <coughs> print, television, digital, and even adv advocacy, but I've never seen the media at such crossroads as it is right now globally. <laughs>